Thanks, Tony, and thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Christina King, and in the 25 plus years that I spent with Crescent Design, I've learned all the ins and outs of our hydraulic burst leak tester, as well as supporting customers to help develop tests for their products. The focus today is on catheter balloon testing. So I'm gonna be discussing burst testing, leak testing, fatigue testing, and compliance testing. First, I'd like to discuss why we do testing. Testing provides us with valuable information about our catheter balloon's performance, as well as its safety for use in the field. Testing is also required for regulatory compliance. ISO 10555 specifies a variety of ways in which intravascular catheters need to be tested for use in the field. Testing allows us to determine the failure characteristics of our products. It's important to know at what pressure the balloon or catheter fails and where and how does the catheter fail. In a production environment, acceptable quality limit testing is required. A percentage of every batch of catheters must pass certain test criteria in order for that lot of balloons to be released to market. And we also do testing during the R&D and design assurance phases of developing our balloons and catheters. Burst testing is the pressurization of a balloon or balloon catheter until it fails. Bursts are characterized by a dramatic change in pressure over a short period of time. It's important to use the right tool or piece of equipment to get a job done accurately and correctly. And selecting a burst tester is no different. Some things we wanna consider in our selection are things such as, does the, does the tester have a maximum pressure great enough to detect burst events? Do we have adequate deliverable volume for testing? And are the resolution and accuracy good enough to meet our testing requirements? Burst test parameters to consider when we're developing a burst test include our ramp rate, target pressure, and burst rate. When we're selecting our ramp rate, it's usually dependent on the type of product that we're testing, as well as maximizing our test time. For instance, if we're testing a catheter with a very small lumen, we're gonna to need to select a slower ramp rate due to flow restriction. If we're testing a catheter that is more compliant and larger, we can go faster with our ramp rate, but we do need to be careful not to go too fast as to lose control of the ramp. We should set our target pressure higher than the pressure that we expect our, our product to fail. And the burst rate should be set in order to trigger leak conditions. I'm sorry, burst conditions. Leak testing is more complex and is dependent on the size of the leak and the compliance of the whole catheter. For instance, a cardiac catheter is non-compliant compared to an esophageal catheter. And this is gonna affect how our leak test is designed. Leak detection can only take place during the dwell period in a program tester script. The HBLT must stop maintaining pressure in order to detect a change in pressure that would indicate a leak. When we're selecting our leak tester, we wanna consider similar things to our selection of a burst tester, but the resolution and accuracy are much more critical to leak testing. Leak testing parameters include what pressurization mode are we gonna use? Typically a leak test is done in a staircase pressurization mode where we need to indicate a initial pressure, an increment pressure, and a maximum pressure. Our maintain and dwell times are very important in leak testing. We wanna have a maintain time that's long enough that the catheter has an opportunity to settle at the target pressure before stopping and dwelling to look for leaks. We wanna set our leak rate and our leak dip in such a way that it will trigger events when the product fails. Fatigue, te fatigue testing involves ramping the catheter to a target pressure for a program number of cycles. Fatigue testing may include both leak and burst detection. And with a smart manifold, fatigue testing can be performed on up to 10 products at a time. Automatically, this can be done automatically and unattended by an operator. Fatigue test parameters include target pressure, return pressure, burst rates, maintain and dwell time, leak rate and leak dip, and the number of cycles. ISO 10555 Annex B provides us with a simple 
a good example of a simple fatigue test. The standard calls for a balloon to be pressurized to its rated burst pressure and maintained there for 30 seconds for a total of nine cycles. Our target pressure in this example would be the rated burst pressure. Our return pressure would most likely be zero and our maintain time is 30 seconds. Compliance testing involves diameter measurement or dimensional verification of pressurized catheters in a temperature controlled water bath. Measurements may be single point or multi-point along the length of the balloon. With the position control system, customers can measure the length of the balloon, find the center of the balloon, and the largest diameter of the balloons. It can also be used to take proximal, medial, and distal measurements of the balloon. MSI has chosen to use an optical micrometer because it has demonstrated the ability to detect the edges of the balloon in water. Some catheter balloon materials refractive index is close to that of water and the Keyence optical micrometer is able to detect those where we have found the laser micrometers cannot. People often ask me why hydraulic pressure testing? So I'd like to go over that a little bit here. The biggest benefit or reason for testing hydraulically is that balloons and catheters are pressurized hydraulically in the field. And if our product handles liquid, it should be tested using liquid. Product, product failures during testing will be representative of actual failures in the field hydraulically. Another reason is for regulatory compliance. ISO 10555 calls for liquid leakage under pressure. Hydraulic testing tends to be more sensitive than pneumatic testing and very small changes in pressure, I'm sorry, very small changes in volume result in large pressure changes, making leak detection more sensitive. Last but not least is safety. Water is incompressible. There is no stored energy and therefore the pressure returns to zero almost instantaneously after an event. I've included some images here of two raw balloons, two ex exactly two balloons that are exactly the same but tested differently. The top balloon was tested hydraulically with our HBLT. The balloon below was tested pneumatically with an indeflator. I think the photos speak for themselves. However, both products had a similar failure, uh, a similar burst pressure but you can see that the failure mode is very different. I've talked a lot today about testing products, what parameters to use, which leads me to something that we call product characterization. Product characterization is the process of trying different test settings and parameters that will produce the most accurate, efficient, and repeatable test results for a specific product. Things to consider with characterization include the compliance of the product. Is it a rigid product or is it a compliant product? What pressurization mode do we want to use? I've mentioned today several different modes, leak, burst, and fatigue testing typically use different pressurization modes. We want to select a correct maintain and dwell time. What are our units of measure? The HBLT allows us to select PSI, atmospheres, bars, and kilopascals. And then what model pressure tester do we want to use? The HBLT is available in uh, models that have a maximum pressure ranging from 25 PSI all the way to 5,000 PSI. And there are reasons for using different models. What are the consequences of not characterizing our product? These things include false events, undetected failures, test settings or parameters that do not produce the same results from one machine to another because they are not optimized. And when we don't get repeatable and reliable results, the quality of our products can be called into question and could lead to product recalls. Pressure Manager is a great tool for doing product characterization. It allows us to see the pressure and volume graph in real time and with sensitive enough settings, we're able to dial in the correct compliance and burst and leak criteria in order to get the repeatable results that we're after. 
The two graphs that you see here represent the same product tested prior to characterization and then after being properly characterized. The graph on the left, for the graph on the left, the compliance was set too high, which caused the ramp rate to become increasingly unstable. The customer set the burst and leak detection too low in order to ignore this instability in the ramp to achieve a target pressure. However, this led to undetected failures as well as test results that did not match from one machine to another. With the use of pressure manager and trying different compliance settings and different burst and leak criteria, our engineers were able to achieve the graph that you see on the right. We see a very stable ramp rate and we got repeatable burst criteria over several different samples. So I think this example really illustrates the importance of doing product characterization. That's all I have for testing today. I really appreciate your time and hope that you learned something. Please feel free to reach out to MSI to learn more about or ask questions about our services as well as our testing equipment. Thank you so much and have a great day.